Broadway's my beat. From Times Square to Columbus Circle. The gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Broadway. It's a mob and a big voice that darts from doorways and screams in your face, then scurls off into the quiet streets. It's a panic in neon where misery and packaged pleasures are commodities, sometime on installments. It's a place that dares you. One way or another, it'll rock you to sleep. It's Broadway, my beat. Early on a January morning, you get up and turn on the heat against the cold of the day. Then there's coffee in the newspaper, the warming things to buffer your shivering at the thought of going out into your own world. I didn't have it that good. I didn't have time for the coffee and newspaper. A call came. It said, get down to St. Anthony's Hospital. I did, and the nun at the information desk said Sister Angela was waiting for me right over there. Sister Angela? Yes, you're from the police. I'm Danny Clover. Headquarters said there was some trouble about a man dying. About Jimmy's dying. Jimmy Hunt. Please, this way. Jimmy was a patient here at the hospital? Yes. And he died. Then I don't see the police, I mean. The manner in which he died, Mr. Clover. Father Clarity said it must be reported to the police. Jimmy committed suicide with a steak knife off his food tray. I see. He was that sick. No. No, he wasn't, Mr. Clover. Jimmy had been a soldier. He fought in a war and he was having trouble forgetting about it. That's all that was wrong with Jimmy. This is the room. Oh, Father Flaherty. This is Mr. Clover, Father. From the police. Mr. Clover. Suicide is always deplorable, Mr. Clover. And to attend death with the police even more so. However, I... I understand, Father. This is Jimmy. He was found like this? Yes. The attendant found him. Fred Owen, the attendant's name. Owen found him and called me. I'd like to talk with Fred Owen, Father. Uh, Of course. Uh, Sister... I'm afraid that's impossible, Father. Fred must have gone home for the day. This finding Jimmy dead by a knife, it undoubtedly made him ill. Fred is a very sensitive boy. Surely. Did Jimmy have any visitors? Why, yes, I, I have them here, Mr. Clover, a list... I called to tell them of Jimmy. If you don't mind, sister. Yes, here. I I don't understand. Routine, sister. Simply to complete a file. Uh, Is is that all, Mr. Clover? A few more things. I'll want the attendant's address. Of course. And a question. Could uh, anyone, anyone at all, attendant, visitors, anybody, could someone have come in here and murdered Jimmy? What are you saying? Please. Uh, Yes. Uh, It could have been done, Mr. Clover. What are you getting at? Jimmy was stabbed in the side too close to his back to make him a suicide. Jimmy was murdered. You can say rights now, Father. A man who has slept on the beaches of death so many times is struck down finally in the ultimate screeching brutality of violence. And a nun's silent, gentle hands, the whispered chant of a priest, try to ease the pain of his journey into the shocking chasms of darkness. All a cop can do for the man is to find out why he had to die in this way. So the cop calls at the address of one named Fred Owen, finds him not at home, hasn't been home, don't know when he'll come home. Then the cop sends out an all-points bulletin on one named Fred Owen. Then the cop calls on the first of a murdered man's visitors list. Who is it? It's Danny Clover of the police. You're here about Jimmy? Please come in. The girl was slender, her face delicate with an almost wistful expression. But it was her eyes, gray and soft, as if the color had been strained through gauze. Please sit here. Thank you. They called me from St. Anthony's. They told me about Jimmy, Mr. Clover. They told me. Then you're Virginia Scott. Yes. I'm glad you came to me, Mr. Clover, because I can tell you things about him no one else knew. Not even the doctor's. I understand why he killed himself. Shall I tell you why? 
Jimmy didn't commit suicide, Miss Scott. He was... He was murdered. Who... Who would do that to my poor lost Jimmy? Jimmy... Miss Scott. Jimmy was brave. He was kind and innocent. He was my child and my love. All he ever did wrong was to get lost. Will you help me find his murderer, Miss Scott? Yes. Yes. Who would kill him? Who kills Mr. Clover? Who searches out a wounded boy and kills him? Why are there such people? How long have you known him? We met at a dance. His company was going overseas. I didn't know anyone there. But Jimmy asked me to dance. And I fell in love with him. He kept in touch with you? Every day. We wrote each other every day. Did he ever mention anyone in his letters, anyone who could... Who hated him? Who wanted to kill him? Yes, Mr. Clover. All the nameless ones who had to kill other nameless men. He was a soldier. Virginia, I... Don't... Don't try to find words, Mr. Clover. The words that heal pain. Are there such? You can do one thing for me, though. Anything. The letters I wrote Jimmy in the hospital, they were love letters. Every day I couldn't visit him, I wrote him one. May I have them? Letters? There weren't any. What? But they were all I could ever give Jimmy. I know he'd keep them. They have to be there. I'll find them, Virginia. I only ask this. I know you'll understand. Why didn't you marry Jimmy? Why? Why burden him with more? Didn't you notice, Mr. Clover? I'm blind. She said it gently and smiled and offered me her hand. Then I left. Then I found a crowd and walked into it and stuck with it. That way I could clutter my mind up with other faces. After a while, I put my hand in my pocket and took out a piece of paper. It had names on it and addresses. Under Virginia Scott's was a man's name, Mickey Bianco. The address was a pool room on 16th Street off 8th Avenue. Where do I find Mickey Bianco? You're in my way. Yeah, oh, sorry. Hey, nice shot. You should play for money. I'm Mickey Bianco, mister. You know Jimmy Hunt? You like that shot? I'm quivering with excitement. Where'd you know him from? The army? Yeah, the army. Where I picked up an eight ball and parlayed it into a two-table pool room. About Jimmy Hunt. I'm from the police. Huh? What about Jimmy Hunt? What do you want about him? Did you kill him? Oh, he did? <laughs> dead, huh? <laughs> Jimmy Hunt, dead. Lieutenant James Hunt. A civilian casualty. Hip, hip, hooray. Makes you patriotic. Yeah, like the Lieutenant Hunt taught me. Be patriotic. Point yourself forward at the enemy when you die, men, he said to us. And he meant it. You were in his outfit? Sure, his platoon. We were murdered being patriotic at Inouitak. But not the lieutenant. And not me either. Uh, everybody else, but not us. Fortune's a war. Did you visit him at the hospital? It was my pleasure, believe me. Oh, don't pat me on the back for going to see my old lieutenant. You know why I went? I made him feel worse. I reminded him about what he did to his platoon. And that'd make him pull his knees up to his chest. I like to watch. Yeah. Did you see any letters just lying around the room? Letters addressed to Jimmy when you visited him? Letters? What letters? Uh-uh. But that other question, did I kill Jimmy? You know, I should have thought of doing it, but I didn't. Hand me the chalk, policeman. <laughs> The shaded lamp that hung over the pool table gouged a cone of saffron light out of the shadows. And trapped in the twist of light were frayed banners of smoke and whispers and aimless dust, the silhouetted outline of Bianco's face and hands. Then the sharp click of wood on ivory, the pleased titter spilling out of Bianco's mouth. <laughs> and this, too, can be the requiem for a dead man. It stayed with me all the way to headquarters where a report was to be filed, where questions were to be asked. And questions you ask of Sergeant Tartaglia. Sometimes he has answers. Well, the answer to that one is in the positive negative, Danny. Uh, be kind to me, Tartaglia. Sometimes I don't understand things. 
What is a positive negative? Oh, easy. Positively, we have found no trace of Fred Owen. The reports from the boys looking for Fred Owen are negative. This makes valid the use of the double... Uh, uh, the double... Yeah. What about the letters? The letters Virginia Scott wrote to the boy in the hospital. Have you found them? Oh, no, Danny, no. No, we haven't found the letters. We searched the effects of the deceased. We checked with Sister Angela and with Father Flaherty. No letters. Does it make a difference, Danny? Danny Clover speaking. Mr. Clover, I'm sorry to bother you. Oh, I told you any time, Virginia. Something strange has happened. A phone call just came, and a voice said I would die. What? It said if I didn't want to die, I'd better get some protection. What does it mean, Mr. Clover? It means lock the door and bolt the windows. I'm coming right down. Danny? Get a squad car to Taglia. Don't stand there. Get it. It's me, Virginia. Open the door. You came so quickly, Mr. Clover. Has anyone... No, there's been no one. I've just been sitting here listening to the sounds of the street. You know, Mr. Clover, when night falls, it has a sound. Shall I turn on the light? No. Is there any other entrance to this apartment? Yes, the kitchen. It has a door opens onto the hallway. Is it locked? Yes. You told me, Mr. Clover. I'll unlock it. What? It'll be all right, Virginia. We'll leave this one open, too. Where were you sitting? Over here, near the window. Sit there now. I'll stand over here. Why would anyone want to kill me, Mr. Clover? I don't know. Maybe because you're all that's left of Jimmy. If they want to kill me, why did they tell me to get protection? It doesn't seem logical, does it? Maybe it's not. Shh. I hear someone, Mr. Clover. Don't move. Mr. Clover? He's heading for the fire escape at the back, Mr. Clover. I can tell by the sound. You'll have to come with me, Virginia. I can't leave you here. Just hold my hand. There he is, down at the bottom of the fire escape. He got away, didn't he, Mr. Clover? In a car. He got away. Yes, Virginia, he got away. Give me your hand, Mr. Clover. Suddenly it's darker than it's ever been. There's this about Broadway. It has a bag full of free illusions in every color, every size. Guaranteed against fading, warranted against shrinkage. Want an illusion, kid? Just reach in the bag. There's more where that one came from. There's the illusion that Broadway can break its heart. And here's one in a classy, all-plastic 1950 model, laboratory tested. The illusion that Broadway can shed a tear. That's the one you'll want for the murder of a sick soldier boy. For the girl of his heart and his dreams. The song of a girl with sightless eyes. Hug it close to you, kid, because it's fragile. Danny! Danny, what's the matter? Danny, you look sick. No. No, it's something different from sick. Hey, Danny, can I get you a glass of water or something? What do you want, Tartaglia? Danny, I just want you shouldn't look like that. What else do you want, Tartaglia? Ah, now, Danny, don't be like that. I know how upset you are because of the boy, because of how they tried to kill that blind girl. Ah, I, I don't figure it, Danny. If they wanted to kill her, why did they tell her to get protection? Maybe it wasn't her they wanted to kill. No? Hey, then that means it was... Danny, I got it. The killer set it up that way because it was you he wanted to kill. Hey, Danny, we got to do something. We, Answer we... the phone to Taglia. What? Oh, oh, yeah, Danny, yeah. Danny Clover's office, Sergeant Tartaglia speaking. What? Yeah. Yeah, right away. Danny. What was it? That was Dan Dobin, desk sergeant, the 29th precinct. They got Fred Owen. He gave himself up. He's confessed to the murder of Jimmy Hunt. Hey, Danny, take your rubber coat. You catch your death of cold. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Fred Olin. You killed a man, huh, Olin? You killed Jimmy Hunt. Why? Killed him. Tell me about it. That's why you came here, wasn't it? You want to tell someone about it? Tell me. You... I'm Danny Clover. I'm a policeman. I'll tell you. You're a policeman. You'll make me suffer for what I did to Jimmy. I killed him, and I've got to suffer for it. I've got to feel what Jimmy I'll felt. I'll take it easy, Owen. Just tell me how you did it. With a knife? With a knife. Go ahead. Mr. Clover, did it hurt him much? I don't think so. I cut up his food for him so he could feed himself, so he wouldn't have to use a knife. The doctor always warned me not to let Jimmy use a knife. You see, the doctor was afraid that Jimmy... that Jimmy would do what he did to him. Did he do, Owen? I was feeding him, and then I suddenly remembered something I had to do. Yeah, what? Something I forgot. <laughs> it wouldn't have happened. It didn't have to happen. Then you remembered. Is that when you stabbed him? <laughs> As if it had been with my own hand. <laughs> you see, Jimmy, Jimmy liked me to read to him while he was eating, and I forgot to bring a book. And so I left to get it. I left Jimmy with the nut. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that Jimmy killed himself and you left him alone with a knife? As if it had been with my own hands. I killed him. It was my fault that Jimmy's dead. My fault. I killed him as surely as if I'd plunged the knife into him. I tried to break through the wall of tears he'd built around himself, but it was no good. I tried to ask him about Virginia's letters. He didn't know anything about them, he said. And it was another lash of the whip he held over himself. I finally broke his heart by releasing him from the dismal, bitter shadows of the cell he'd baked for. And then I took a long walk in the cold, unspoiled air. Then I knew I had to get back to it. The third name on the visitor's list was Madge Taylor, whose address was a brownstone between other brownstones on West 53rd. I climbed the steps that led to its doors with the cracked stained glass. Hey, man, looking for someone? Yeah, Madge Taylor, is she here? Come in, man. Well, come in. You want me to freeze? You're a match, Taylor? Yeah. Right in there. What the old battle axe that runs his flat don't know won't hurt her. Anyway, it's cuddlier with the door closed, huh, man? Such a nasty draft in that hallway. Madge, I'm Danny Clover, the police. Huh? Let's have a drink on it, shall we, Danny? They told me you visited a man in the hospital, a man named Jimmy Hunt. Friend of yours? <laughs> it's funny what I said. It kills me. I thought you were... Uh... <clears throat> All you want to know is, did I murder Jimmy Hunt? Isn't that it? Why did you visit him? I'll tell you why. You see me, how I am? Charge it up to Jimmy Hunt. Send him the bill. You were in love with Jimmy Hunt? The lieutenant? The wonder boy with the loose marbles? Are you kidding? I never saw him in my life till I found out he was brain sick in that hospital. I don't... I'll draw you a diagram. I was in love once with a kid. A soldier kid. My husband. Lieutenant Jimmy Hunt killed him. Killed me, too, at the same time. Because the lieutenant thought it was dandy. Kids should be killed. This the lieutenant liked. You still want to know why I visited him? No, no, Madge. I've heard it once. When you saw him, did he have any letters? How would I know? All I care about Jimmy Hunt was that he should die. Slow, slow, a long time dying. Yeah. Stick around, Madge. Don't go away. You out of your mind? I love it here. I never had it so good. <laughs> it's a free ride on a roller coaster, man. Hi, Danny. Hey, I got news for you. Yeah, what is it? There's a guy in your office waiting for you. Who is he? Uh, named Scott. Says he has a daughter named Virginia Scott. Uh, hey, ain't that the girl... Danny! Your name's Scott? It is. And you're Danny Clover. Virginia described you to me. Well, don't look surprised, Mr. Clover. 
My daughter is a perceptive girl. Nothing about Virginia surprises me, Mr. Scott, except the fact that she has a father. I didn't know that before. Because Virginia didn't want you to know. She'd have a reason for that, Mr. Scott. Oh, it's all bound up with the kind of person she is. Her love for people who love her. The reason why she insisted on living alone without me. The reason why she didn't want me mixed up in this affair. She thinks you had a motive for killing Jimmy? She knows I did. That's why I'm here. Well, perhaps you'd never have found out. But that's why I'm here. To tell you I had a motive for killing Jimmy. Which was what? I hated that boy. Hated him for what he was. For what he could do to people. His arrogance. His snobbishness. The play acting he did to cover his cowardice. By his very existence, Jimmy Hunt was a liar. Mostly you resented his making love to your daughter. Yes. My daughter is blind. Whatever she can do on her own, sew, cook, turn on lights, dial a telephone, it doesn't alter the fact. Virginia is blind. It's her burden. She didn't deserve another awful one like Jimmy Hunt, a sick boy who willed himself sick. Virginia knew you felt this way? She knew I was prepared to kill Jimmy that very day. But you didn't. Is that what you're telling me? That very day, I went to the ward to kill him. That's what was on my mind to do. But an attendant saw me. Asked me my business there. When I couldn't answer him properly, he made me leave. No, I didn't kill Jimmy. But there's this. There's what? I'm glad he said. He got up and walked away, and I let him. But because I'm a cop, I had a man follow him. And because I'm a cop, I had to check on his story, whether he had actually left the war the morning Jimmy Hunt was killed. That meant I had to talk to Fred Owen, the attendant. I called the hospital, and they told me Owen hadn't showed up, and as far as they knew, he was home. So that's where I went, too, to the home of Fred Owen. His landlady was a kind woman. Fred will be right back, Mr. Clover. Would you like to wait in his room? Yes, please. Next room down on your right. Thanks. I'll find my way. Wait, wait, I'll go with you. Turn on the fire. Sometimes it gets cold here in Fred's room. Can't understand it. A nice gas fireplace like this, and Fred likes to sit here in the cold. There. Don't that make a nice fire? Yeah, cozy. Yeah, this is a real cozy room. Now, Fred decorated it himself. I allow him to hang pictures. Lots of landladies don't allow hanging pictures. Nice pictures. All girls. It's man's privilege. Girls with veils over their eyes. Girls with their eyes closed. Sightless girls. Yeah, and here's one with a man on it with a girl holding his hands over her eyes like he's going to surprise her. <laughs> Fred. Oh, hello, Fred. I was just telling I'm Mr. happy you're here, Mr. Clover. I'll make some coffee. Thanks, but I don't care for any, Fred. <laughs> I'll just leave you two gentlemen alone. I know how gentlemen like to talk sometimes without ladies. You like my room, Mr. Clover? I was just admiring your pictures. Yeah, I like them too. But all these girls, their eyes covered. They can't see you. I know. Some men hang pictures of girls. Well, you know. Because that's the kind of men they are. What kind are you, Fred? I'm an ugly kind of man. My face, I mean. I know I am. Girls never look at me on the street. Even when I stare at them and set my mind that they should look at me. They look away even when I talk to them. Virginia doesn't, does she? No. Oh, no. When she comes to the hospital and I say good morning to her, she smiles and, and talks right to me. Once she doesn't come to the hospital, she writes you... Doesn't she, Fred? Oh, yes, of course she does, because she loves me. She... Maybe you don't believe that, Mr. Clover. But I'll show you. Here. This will show you that she loves me. Her letters to me. Go ahead, take one of them out of the envelope and read it. I'm not ashamed of our love. Yeah. She loves you all right, Fred. But look... Look at this. Yeah? You've crossed Jimmy's name out wherever it's mentioned and written in your own. Well, of course I did. Don't you see, Virginia's very clever. She wrote those letters to Jimmy, but she knew I'd get them. I knew Virginia wanted it like that. And Jimmy... <laughs> Jimmy was sick. You know. 
He thought Virginia really meant them for him. So you stabbed him. You really did kill him, didn't you? Oh, I had to. He was getting worse and worse about Virginia all the time. Why didn't you tell me that when I talked to you in the cell, Fred? Because I'm clever, too. Yes, you are. That was a clever trap you set for me in Virginia's apartment. No, you're wrong. I wasn't clever then. You got away. Put down that knife, Fred. It won't hurt, Mr. Clover. It didn't hurt Jimmy. You said it didn't. Now give me my letters. I don't want blood on Virginia's letters. Here are your letters, Fred. He lay there, his body taut, as if unwilling to accept what was happening to him. His mouth hung open in disbelief, and the spasm in his fingertips groped for the fireplace and the ashes of his letters. But the final, the complete rejection was in his eyes, open and staring at me, empty of passion, of insanity even cold and empty, his eyes staring and sightless. Broadway's having itself a time. It's cocky and it's needling people to step over the line. It's making a big muscle and daring the nighttime. And before it's over, it'll gouge chunks out of itself and laugh at its own agony. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway, my beat. <laughs> Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia. The musical score was composed and conducted by Alexander Courage and the program was produced by Elliot Lewis and directed by Gordon T. Hughes. The cast tonight included Peggy Weber, Ted Von Elts, Mary Jane Croft, Georgia Ellis, Jerry Hausner, and Jack Edward. Joe Walters speaking... 